In recent years, states across the U.S. have been dealing with large increases in reports of injuries to crops, trees, and plants. These injuries are symptomatic of exposure to plant growth regulator herbicides such as 2,4-D and dicamba, which are commonly used in agriculture and lawn management. These injuries can be the result of two types of drift. Particle drift, when wind carries away herbicide particles at the time of application, or vapor drift, which can occur many days after application when the applied herbicide vaporizes into the air and moves off-site causing unintended and unacceptable harm to many species of sensitive broadleaf plants. This slide helps provide perspective on how the use of some herbicides has changed in recent years. To use the example of dicamba, the new herbicide formulations were released in time for the 2017 growing season, and use of the herbicide expanded across millions of acres of American farmland. These figures are from the United States Geological Survey. The map on the left shows the estimated agricultural use of dicamba in 2016, and here you can see the same map with data for 2017. Both the 2017 map and the graph of use by year and crop are actually low estimates of the agricultural use of dicamba. If you look at the graph on the right, which shows the estimated use of dicamba in millions of pounds by year and crop, you can see a steady decline in its use for 10 to 15 years following the introduction of glyphosate-resistant technology. Then, a steady increase that likely correlates to the emergence of glyphosate-resistant weeds. Then we see a major spike in 2017, which is the most recent year of data available through this data set. The amount of dicamba applied to all U.S. crops more than doubled in 2017 relative to 2016, driven by the increased use in soybeans and cotton. Formal complaints of pesticide misuse also increased dramatically with the increased use in dicamba across the landscape, further emphasizing the risk posed by the widespread use of volatile herbicides. The severity of symptoms and related yield or plant loss depend on many factors, including the type of herbicides used, the level and number of exposures, the plant sensitivity to the herbicide, the plant's growth stage, overall plant health, and external environmental conditions. It is important to document symptoms of herbicide injury. Documenting symptoms helps you gain a better understanding of the health of your farm or property. It also helps you track annual changes in perennial plant health, and it provides valuable information to organizations and agencies that monitor or record symptoms associated with herbicide drift. There are certain areas that you should avoid when documenting symptoms on your property. Avoid woodland border areas that are directly adjacent to cropland, where root uptake of herbicides could be a reason for symptoms. Also avoid monitoring trees with total weed treatment around the base, and plants from areas with turf that has been treated for broadleaf weeds. Whether you're looking at a field of a single crop, an orchard, a pasture, a natural area, or a woodland, it is important to check for symptoms on more than one type of plant. Some natural events such as flooding, drought, or disease can cause common symptoms such as leaf cupping, twisting, and elongation. If you suspect injury from dicamba or another growth regulator herbicide, you should see symptoms on a variety of nearby broadleaf plants. The type and severity of symptoms may vary between plants, but the presence of injuries over a large area increases the likelihood that you are in fact observing symptoms of herbicide drift and helps rule out other causes. Begin looking at your trees, crops, or plants early in the year. Symptoms may appear early in the growing season. Try to make several observations throughout the season. The most common symptoms observed are leaves that are stunted, cupped, curled, twisted, and or puckered. But you may also observe leaves that are strapped or appear to be stretched out, or have discolored foliage. In extreme cases, you may observe defoliation branch dieback, or whole tree or plant death. When you document symptoms, take good notes. Include the date. Describe the location, 
what part of the property you are on, the plants that are affected, plants that seem unaffected, the symptoms you are observing, and any other information that may help you remember what you observed. Take photos of different plant types and species that are showing symptoms. Take photos up close, as well as whole plant photos, and photos of the tree canopy as well. This is recommended for crops, gardens, landscaping, trees, and natural areas. Examining the condition of surrounding plants can help you rule out other factors, such as disease and insects. It never hurts to look closely at leaves to examine for insects. And keep in mind that not all plants react to drift the same way. Now let's look at some symptoms in crops. These are soybeans. Soybean injury from dicamba drift has received much attention, but many other crops, trees, and plants have been injured by growth regulator herbicides. This photo shows the classic curling and cupping, probably the most common symptoms observed. Here we have curling in the leaves of peach and apple trees. The leaves of these green beans are cupped, curled, and puckered. The most apparent symptoms in this tomato plant are curling and twisting of the leaves and stem. Now let's look at leaf symptoms in trees. This sweet gum is showing moderate cupping and drooping. Symptoms can vary in severity between species, within species, between locations, or even at the same location. This red bud has noticeably curled or cupped leaves. The leaves are cupping up. Some of the leaves are also starting to show some scalloping or irregular margins. Here is an example of downward cupping in red bud. These are not as pronounced as in the previous photos, but you can see some cupping and even some general folding starting to occur in this red bud. It is worth noting that trees will typically hang on to injuries throughout the growing season, whereas symptoms may become less severe in some herbaceous plants later in the growing season. This is an example of cupping in oak. This is a black oak. Oaks appear to be especially affected and are an important species in many hardwood forests. This is a white oak. These leaves are curled, stunted, and deformed. These red oak leaves are curled and stunted. Stunted leaves in red oak. This is a swamp white oak. It has cupping and serves as a good example of leaves showing irregular margins. This is pignut hickory. The leaves are curled and twisted. While sycamores can be prone to anthracnose, a fungal disease, in the spring, they appear to also be sensitive to growth regulator herbicides in mid-season. Here is a sycamore with some obvious downward cupping and curling. This is flowering dogwood. Dogwoods commonly show symptoms of curling and irregular margins or edges. Here is another example of flowering dogwood. These leaves have irregular margins. This is a sugar maple showing some cupping and curling. If you look at the photo on the left, although the branch is being held for the photo, you can still notice that these leaves are also drooping. The photo on the right is similar, although the symptoms are slightly more severe. Sometimes it can be difficult to observe what is happening in larger trees, but one thing you may notice is canopy thinning. Perhaps there just isn't the shade that used to be there, or you can see more of the sky through the trees than in the past. It is important to get a good look at the trees to observe symptoms. Take photos of the tree canopy for future reference. This will help you detect any changes in the canopy in future years. This is a white oak. It has noticeably stunted leaves that are also severely curled. You will notice larger leaves in this photo as well. The tree has tried to recover from injury by producing new leaves. This is rosin weed, Silphium integrifolium. On the left is an example of a normal plant that is not showing symptoms of herbicide exposure. 
On the right is a very different looking plant. Notice the twisting and curling. This is compass plant, another one of the sylphiums. Notice the curling and twisting in the leaves. And finally, this is sweet coneflower. You will notice that these plants have curled and cupped leaves, similar to what we might see in soybean or green bean. So where do you turn when you notice symptoms on your crops or plants? There are several things you can do. First, as we discussed previously, document the symptoms you observe for your own records. You can also report symptoms of herbicide drift. This page on the US EPA's website provides several options for reporting and documenting pesticide-related incidences to wildlife or the environment, including herbicide drift. Scrolling down the page, you will see even more options. If you want to report symptoms of drift that do not involve a known violation of pesticide laws or recommendations, you can email details about the injury directly to the US EPA by clicking on the link enclosed in red here. You can also send a copy to state regulatory agencies for their information and documentation. The US EPA's website also has a link to the National Pesticide Information Center, which also provides a wealth of information. Their Ecological Incident Reporting Portal collects information from government organizations, the public, academia, wildlife rehabilitation centers, conservation societies, and beekeepers, and provides information to the EPA. They do not collect information for enforcement. Additionally, each state has one agency that works cooperatively with the US EPA to enforce federal pesticide regulations and respond to complaints. Pesticide regulations on tribal lands may be enforced by a tribal designee or by the US EPA. If you don't know what agency is responsible for regulating pesticides in your state, there are several ways you can find out. This map on the National Pesticide Information Center's website has links to each state's regulatory agency. This does not take you directly to the office responsible for pesticide misuse or incidences. You will need to call the agency or explore their website in order to report suspected herbicide drift to your property. Here in Illinois, report symptoms to the Illinois Department of Agriculture. Even moderate levels of repeated and or chronic exposures can injure plants and have not only visible, but also unseen effects on our environment. Paying attention to what is happening on your property and documenting and reporting symptoms if you see them is important. Proper documentation of symptoms of herbicide drift provides useful information that can lead to better protections for specialty growers and can also help protect our valuable ecosystems from avoidable and unnecessary threats.